Hi kids, it's great to see you again. We have an exciting day coming this weekend. It's an important big day. Do any of you guys know which day it is? It will be Mother's Day. Mother's Day, it's like celebrated in our church, in your family, in our church, in our city, in our province, in our country, like everybody where we live is celebrating Mother's Day on the same day, honoring our moms. In some countries, it's on a different day. In Africa, they have it on a different day. But in our part of the world, everybody is celebrating Mother's Day and thinking about how we could honor our mothers. How can we honor our mothers? Does anybody know what honor means? It means like um, telling them that they're important respecting them and listening to them and just showing them about how much we love them. That's what honoring means. And it's actually in the Bible that we should honor our mother and father. We're going to look that up a little bit later. I was wondering if you wanted to talk about some of the very favorite things about your mothers. Like what are some of the favorite things that they do or say? I can think of some of the favorite things that my mother does. I still have a mother alive. If I'm old, you would not believe how old my mother is. She is ancient. But I love some of the things she does. She's pretty forgetful. And she just has to laugh at herself sometimes. And she laughs at people so much. Everybody in her whole building knows that this is the lady that knows how to laugh. She's so much fun. And the other thing that I love about my mother is her baking. Oh my goodness, she baked the best buns of all time. Oh, they were so good. One thing I didn't love about my mother is that she always made me clean the house and clean my room. I imagine that's the same about you guys, right? But that's what mother's jobs are. Our parents' jobs are, is to make sure that our house is clean and healthy, that we eat healthy stuff, so that's kind of part of their job. So on Mother's Day, it becomes our job to do stuff for them. Every other day they're doing stuff for us, right? So on Mother's Day, it's kind of like it's reversed. It's our turn to do a, jobs for them. So think about some of the things that you guys are going to do for your moms today. Like some kids make their moms breakfast. Some of the kids do dishes or bring their mom flowers, stuff like that. It'd be very cool for whatever you can do for your mom today in this weekend coming up. And Krista's going to show us how to make a craft in a few minutes too, and something that we can do for Mother's Day. Just before we do the craft, let's look at some mothers in the Bible. Can you think of some of the mothers that were mentioned in the Bible? Hmm, the first mother that ever was. Do you remember the first people in the Bible in the first book called Genesis? The first mother ever, her name was Eve. Remember Adam and Eve? Yeah, that was the first mother ever. Then a little ways down, a little ways, I think it's in the second book called Exodus. Remember Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus? Well, at Exodus is a story about a famous mom. If you look for in your Bibles at the book of Exodus in the second chapter, so that's this, the big number two, then you're going to find the story of Moses, the baby in the basket. So a cool thing about Moses' mom is how much she loved and protected him. When he was born, it says, Okay, if you look at little number two, it says that she had a son and she saw that her baby was a fine child. Isn't that funny? We all think our babies are the finest children of all time. But it says right here in the Bible, she saw her baby was a fine child. And so she hid him for three months. I don't know if you remember the part of the story of why she had to hide him. It was because the king, the wicked king, was trying to get rid of all the baby boys, right? But she saw he was so wonderful, and she thought, God can save him, and I'm going to protect this boy. So she hid him for three months. 
when she couldn't hide him anymore because he was smiling and gurgling and chuckling and, and a happy baby. What did she do? She thought, what am I going to do? So she made a basket and it wasn't easy to make a basket. I was looking at this basket. Like it would take a long time. She must have had to work very hard to get all these pieces to go in and out. If you have a basket in your house, you should take a look at it. It would take a long time to make the basket for her little baby boy. And then it says she didn't just leave it like this because all the water would go straight through there, right? And she was going to hide him in the water. So how was she going to make it like a little boat? She painted the inside with some stuff, kind of like tar, kind of like the stuff they put on the roads because it's really waterproof. And then she painted it really, really good. And she put a little blankie in there and then she put her baby in there and she put him in the water close to close to the edge of the shore and the little waves were just rocking him and rocking him and then she said to his big sister his big sister's name was Miriam she said now you watch over the baby and I'm going to go and do some other stuff and you watch over him and what happened Miriam was watching and protecting him too and then all of a sudden Oh no, here comes somebody and they're coming closer to the water and closer to the water and closer to the water. And Miriam was a little bit afraid. But what happened? It was a beautiful princess came down with her servants and they came to the edge of the water. And there they saw a basket. And the princess said, bring me that basket. And she looked inside the basket and there was the most fine little baby boy and she was the name the person that named him she pulled him out of the water and she said i would like this baby boy to live and she named him moses i thought it's kind of interesting that she was the one that named him miriam came running she must have been very brave miriam came running and said would you like somebody to help you look after that baby? I know somebody that could help look after him, kind of like a granny or kind of like a, um, a nanny could look after your baby. And the princess said, that would be lovely. And so Miriam ran and got the mom and the mom came and she got to raise her little boy. And the princess even paid her for raising her baby. Can you imagine that? She got to be the mom and she got to do it like a job and she did looked after him so good and he became a big boy and he part of his life he lived in the palace but you can read the whole story of Moses in that book of Exodus today we're actually talking about moms so let's go back and think about Moses mom and how much she loved her baby and how she wanted to protect him and make him a little basket and do the very best for him she must have prayed so much and God honored her prayer and she got to raise her boy. Another mother in the Bible. Let's think, are there any other mothers that we can think about? How about Mrs. Noah? Can you imagine Mrs. Noah being in that ark forever and a day and the rain and the rain kept coming down and she was with all the animals in there? I sure hope she liked all animals. I think it would be pretty interesting if you were an animal lover or not. It would be so interesting to take a look close up at the elephants. Can you imagine? The lions, the tigers, the monkeys. She probably told them to behave themselves because they were getting into mischief. Monkeys get into mischief. One time when I was in Africa, I was sitting and having my coffee break and a monkey came out of the tree and it took my cup away from me. And the owner from the restaurant came out and he said, you can't let them take your cups, look up in the tree. And I looked in the tree and there was tons of cups hanging in the tree that the monkeys had stolen. Now, can you imagine Mrs. Noah looking after the monkeys and every animal that was in that ark? I bet she had some fun times too, right? Let's think about another mother in the Bible. How about Jesus' mother? We know quite a bit about her. We know about when the angel came to see her. Do you remember the Christmas story? The angel came to see her and said, you're going to be a mom. And she said, 
how can it be? I don't even have a husband yet. And the angel said, but the Holy Spirit is going to come on you and you're going to become a mom. And she was an awesome lady. And she said, I will be God's servant. Whatever God wants me to do, that's what I will do. And Jesus' mom must have known some real heartache because of some of the things that happened to Jesus, right? And she loved him so much, protected him as much as she could until he was a grown-up. So these are some of the moms and how much they, in the Bible and how much they cared for their kids was just amazing. And how much your moms care about you is so amazing. So today you get to tell them how much you love them and appreciate and love the things that they do and some of the things that they say. They probably bake some of the best stuff for you guys too, right? So today you get to tell them about that. And today you get to make them a little gift. And Chris is going to show you how to do the craft. Okay, here's Krista. Thanks, Pastor Judy. So today Pastor Judy has put together a special treat for us. So she's going to email all your mom and dads this piece of paper. You can either print it on white and color it however you want to color it. You can be really colorful with it. Or you can print it on colored paper and cut it all out. That's what we did here at the office. If you don't get this email, what you can do is draw a vase on the bottom of your page, some flower heads, and some flower stems. And you should be able to get it all into one piece of paper. So once you've got some of it cut out, we've got our vase cut out, and we've got a couple of our flowers cut out here. And now I'm just going to cut out one of our stems. On the stems here, we have some gifts that you can give to your mom. So when she gets this all together, each of your stems says, like this one, says this is good for playing a game of your choice. So I'm going to give my mom a, to choose what game we get to have fun playing together. Maybe mom's going to pick a game I don't like, but it's Mother's Day, so it's going to be her choice. So you're going to put a piece of tape on the back of your stem, and then you're just going to put it into your pot. See? They're all taped together now. Make sure you don't cover those words up. You want to be able to see them. I have an idea, Krista. I do. Okay. I think the idea would be if you need help with this craft, you should ask your daddy to help Yeah, you. that'd so be that great. It, yeah, so it could stay a surprise for your mom, don't yeah. you think? I think that's a great okay. idea, Pastor Judy. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm putting my flowers on the top. It's like a tulip. Yep. Cool. So then you have some flowers in a flower pot. And when you're all done, you can take a blank piece of paper and you can tape it all together if you'd like. And then you can do some extra coloring for your mom. And in the end, you're gonna have a stem and she'll have all these little gifts. Let's hear what some of the other ones say. So we've also got, this is for helping with folding laundry. This one is for making you a cup of tea. This one is for making you a handmade gift, like something like this, or a special card, or some other thing that you're really good at. And the last one says this one's for an extra long hug. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thank you, Krista. Thank you. Okay, let's pray. And let's pray for our moms and our grandmas today, okay? Let's do a hands folded prayer today. We don't often do that, but that would be a good one today. Hands folded, and let's do eyes closed for a change. Eyes closed, and just folded hands. Dear God, thank you so much for your love for us, for your love for our mamas, and thank you for our mamas, for all the mothers today, and the grandmothers. And we just pray, God, that you would bless them lots and help them to have a most awesome day. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next week, guys.